Hey everybody, I'm on site here with my friend Nick, and uh, for those of you who don't know Nick, he is the author of the unicorn that's in every Tesla on the planet, so thumbs up for Nick. He's helping me today, and we're going to be installing the uh, Blackview dash cam. I used to have it on my Lincoln, but now we're going to put it in the Model X, so uh, we'll document the process. I hear it's not easy, so uh, if we make any mistakes, then uh, that's for you to learn from. So anyway, stay tuned and uh, watch the process. All right, so the first thing you need to understand about a Model X, of course, is that we really want to put the dash cam underneath the autopilot cameras, but they've got this little track. And so that track has to come off in order to run the two wires power. And uh, in my case, it's a dual channel Blackview system. So there's a second camera in the back of the car. So we got to run a coax cable in there. And then uh, one of the wires has to go through the headliner out to the back of the car. And then the power has to come along, say the A pillar and then down into power here inside the car. The problem with the Model X is the fuse box on this car is located there under some plastic cladding and underneath the carpet. Unlike the Model S, my understanding is that it's way over there on the passenger side under some basic carpet. And uh, I just tried pulling this trim off and it's really nasty. So uh, I think what we're gonna do is probably do what some people have done and, and tap into the, uh, the the OBD port here on the bottom. And I know some of you are gonna comment on the videos, don't do that. But look, we're only pulling maybe two amps. It's not the end of the world. So anyways, let's follow along the process and see what happens. One of the first things we need to do here is to take the housing off the autopilot camera. Now we have some trim tools that are sold at automotive places. This makes it easy in such a way so that it doesn't damage anything. So. I'm just looking around to see if there's any kind of little access points, whatever. Sometimes they have little notches in the plastic. You can pop them off, but I don't see any. So when doing these types of videos, this is what you have to do, is <laughs> do look up <laughs> you <do a> <laughs> as you go. <laughs> so we finally figured out how to get the little plastic housing piece off, and that's to take a blunt screwdriver or whatever, and actually go in underneath between the housing for uh, the plastic piece, the mirror. And uh, you just pull down like that and she'll just pop right off. And then this whole housing comes off like that. You see that piece? So once you pull that off, then you're able to get your, your tools. And I need the thinner one. Let's spudge your hair. Trim removal tools. Oh, it's tight. Oh, there's two screws in there. Look at that. Two Torx. <laughs> nice. Nice, Tesla. Yeah, there's two little Torx screws in there. They look like uh, T8s. You got a T8 set? Yeah, I did not bring my reading glasses. There we go. Okay. Wow, look at that, the autopilot camera system. Okay, it looks like it's a welcome change from what I've seen online. Um, I do believe previously the whole track used to be glued on there, but now it's a, a plastic trim piece on top of the other track. So we should be able to pull this off fairly easily. And it, it stops right here, right uh, behind the headliner. Now hopefully you can see here, I'm pulling the track down. As you can see, there's a, a track that's glued and you can see the wires are exposed. And there's little clips as you go, so you have to be really gentle with it. Click one side, click the other. There we go. And there's your, there's your track. So that should give us complete access here to run our two wires that we need to. Oh yeah, see that? This little piece of tape. Like that. Sorry, Tesla. $500 piece of tape. It's not because of the cold, it's just the material they're using. I know some people have installed these dash cams by running another track parallel. And that's okay, um, but I'm looking for a completely um, OEM fit and finish 
like it was meant to be type of thing. So um, I'm going the extra mile and doing it this way, but you certainly do not have to do it this way. Uh, the trick is I'm trying to make sure that these cables are laying flat because if they crisscross in there, it'll, ca it'll cause a, a bump, you know what I mean? So what I found works quite well is if you start on one side and lay one cable on this side of the track and then come back and do the other, it seems to lay a lot flatter and it goes faster. Okay, so now what we have is the two wires for the dash cam coming out right about that position. And now we're just clicking the channel back in. You get it just right. You should hear the little tabs kick in. These two wires will just come out like that. So this whole thing should just kind of go right back into position. I'm going to keep the other side a little bit loose until we get it all positioned in, then I'll, I'll tighten it all up. And then the dash cam will be centered, more or less, right up against there. We want the center line of the lens to line up with the mount for the uh, rear of your camera so that it's centered in the dash. So we'll just mount it like that. And I've got some more um, sticky 3M tape because, of course, when you take it off of the other car, yeah, it's garbage. So I'll put a new piece on. All right, so we got some brand new 3M automotive tape. Peel that off. Like I said before, make sure you use the black stuff because if you don't and you put this on your windshield, uh, you're going to see it from the outside. All right, so we're just going to end up positioning this with the lens. I'm just going to turn the lens in this direction so I can kind of line it up. Press and hold it for a few seconds. And it turns around. We'll aim it up a little bit later. Like that. So that's looking good. I'm just going to put the last screw in and then we'll put the housing on and put the mirror back together and then we'll be able to focus on the uh, rest of the car. There you go. <laughs> All right. Okay. So now we, now we can put this on without any trouble. This thing, it's just. I wonder if it's a twist and turn. I was gonna say that that piece in there looks. Yeah, and then turn. There you go. Right. There we go. So the next part is to. Um, run the power cable down the A-pillar. So what I'm going to do is just pull this uh, trim piece off. You move the mirror out of the way. And then this trim piece comes off in one piece. Like that. Sounds worse than it actually is. There you go. So there's a piece in here that's uh, L-shaped and it's got to click in this way. So when you put it back in, it's got to click in and then you can just bang it in. Some people will go as far as take the whole A pillar off, but I don't want to. I don't really need to. I can get it underneath the, uh, yeah, inside the seal there. There's plenty of room. I want to loosen this little bit so I can pass the wire underneath the uh, the trim piece here. It's tight. I must say, the trim work on the model on the Model X is is um, very high quality. They've uh, they put a lot of work into this. Break a few nails along the way. <laughs> so what we did is we just ran the uh, power wire down on the inside of this uh, this inner seal, and this uh, bottom seal here just pops up. You just pull up on the plastic like that, just clips, and then you can just run the wire back up and inside. And then we're going to pull it up inside the carpet, and uh, we'll wire that up with the ODB port. But it just kind of sits like that, and that trim work just pops right back down. So that takes care of uh, this part. Do 
And then uh, now we'll uh, concentrate on running the wire to the back camera. Chooch. That's all good. Where the hell's the button? All right, so the next part of the installation is going to be about running this uh, coax cable to the rear camera. And what we're going to do is we're just going to tuck it in underneath the uh, headliner running through the Falcon wing door. And now uh, we'll push it back towards the, uh, the back and install the back camera. My only concern is making sure that this cable is not rattling and stuff inside some of the bodywork when we're driving. You know, passengers complain. So, all right, this is the part where we have to open the bat to oh, uh, separate some of the trim work bits. I got it. Well, it's now the next day, and uh, we're going to continue installation. I had to stop last night because we got a bit of a late start to the day. Uh, to get this dash cam installed. So today we're going to tackle two things. One, we're going to get this uh, coax wire to go through this uh, conduit, plastic con or rubber conduit, so we can install the camera here. So this trim piece here has to come out. Very careful about that. It has to be pulled off straight off, otherwise you'll break the clips. It'll be an expensive mistake. And then lastly, the second part, and we tested this last night here with the uh, cigarette lighter adapter and the dash cam works. Uh, we're going to be tackling the final installation of the uh, electrical. So we're not too sure whether we're going to tap into ODB port or go into the fuse box, which is behind this carpeted area, um, or tap into another wire here that's on the left-hand side. I've seen it th uh, done three different ways, and depending on the complexity, we'll have to tackle whichever one uh, works out best for us. So just for reference, there are two metal clips on each end like that, and then there's a series of these little gray clips along the length of the trim piece. So once you pull it off, you get uh, exposure to the whole electrical area here for the rubber conduit that we have to pull the wires out. This hole here will be the center of the, uh, of the rear hatch, and that's where we're going to line up the center line of the camera. So pull the rubber grommet out. You can stick your finger in here to get it started, but once you do, it just kind of peels away very easily. Be careful because there's a large, rather large bundle of two wires in there to fish the uh, cable through. So I'll undo this one here. It's exactly the same process. So once you pull out the rubber grommet in here, this little plastic piece here has a clip and if you uh, undo that, this whole plastic piece here should come right off. Uh, as you can see, you undo the clip and this uh, strain relief comes right off the bundling wire giving you easier access to run your, uh, your coax through the rubber. All right, so the next part we're going to do is uh, run this fish tape through the uh, rubber conduit. And I've already passed the cable now through the headliner and up through the hole and out there. And uh, we're going to uh, pass the fish tape through and hopefully attach a piece of string to it and then pull the string through and we can pull the cable through. That's in theory. It also helps too if you reduce or you pull down the lift gate a little bit so that it takes some of the tension off the uh, rubber conduit. If you don't do that, it's too tight and you won't be able to get in there. So let's give it a go and see what happens. Well, as it turns out, the fish tape, bad idea. Uh, it's too stiff. And second of all, um, the edge is a little bit too sharp. And these wires here are only wrapped up to um, the point on the inside here. So you risk damaging the wire. So what works best, an extra long zip tie. This is nice and flexible and uh, it fits right inside there really fast and nice and easy. Well, as you can see, the zip tie fits in. I was able to shove that in. Uh, it took maybe 20 seconds total compared to a fish tape, which I was fighting with for about uh, 10 minutes. So this is definitely the recommended uh, method to do this. So uh, yeah, definitely the string method first, and then I will attach this end, which is the coax end, uh, with some uh, electrical tape again, and I'll pull that through, and uh, hopefully that'll work. The best way to attach this string is to do a half hitch here and another one further down so that when you pull it's pulling on both sides equally rather than just pulling the head because you risk uh, damaging everything so if you pull on a longer length it'll be a little bit easier. All right I had some success. Uh, it took about uh, three minutes or whatever and the trick is is to make sure when you put it in you just kind of massage the conduit a little bit as you pull through gently uh, because it's pretty sticky in there and there's not a lot of room 
But if you, uh, like I said, if you massage it, it'll come right through. So this is just pulling right now. Anyways, I'll keep working on this for a few more seconds and then we should be ready to go. All right, I got it all back together. You can see here that the uh, cable's coming out and the grobbits are all put back in. Strain relief is there. Let me say this, mad props to the line workers who work on the production line. This is not easy, um, you know. They must have special tools or lots of training because Man, this is really labor intensive. You know, when Tesla was saying that this is one of the most difficult cars to build, I can certainly appreciate that comment because this thing is just like, holy mackerel, over-engineered. But you know what? Good solid quality, I like it. Okay, just before we button everything up, I just zip tie it all together to the existing wiring harness, the extra coax cable, and this will stick out like this. So that should give us lots of room to hook it all up. All right, we're just finishing up the back and I put a fresh piece of uh, 3M automotive tape on the uh, rear camera. Again, make sure you use black, otherwise it'll show up. So here's the rear camera, it's all installed and it's still rotatable. We'll uh, be able to aim that once we get everything wired up and uh, we connect to it with the phone. And uh, yeah, so now let's take care of the wiring. So here on the left side of the car, if you pull uh, a little plastic grommet out, you can pull the carpet back. And in here, there is a, what looks to be a power cable, red and black as usual. By the way, this is some of the wiring harness for the door, and you can see a couple of the uh, coax connectors for the autopilot camera that's in the side blinker. Anyways, I'm gonna measure and see if there, I can get voltage here. If that works, then I can probably tap into this for constant power. So I just finished measuring. There's definitely voltage on that line, um, but I'm not too sure if I wanna tap into these. Um, I'm gonna have a quick look on this side of the car because behind this pedal, in this uh, plate area here, there is the fuse box, but um, I tried it yesterday and it was very difficult to get in there because there's not just carpet there, there's actually some plastic cladding that's on that carpet area. Not as bad as I thought, but you definitely have to pull uh, this trim piece off. And then there's a whole piece of carpet under here that's held on with the plastic clips as well. And you have to pull that off in several places. Uh, there's definitely a fuse box in there. So let me pull it out and I'll show you what I'm talking about. There's the. Uh, carpet piece you have to pull out and you can see here you got the plastic clips on the back some sound ending material and lo and behold there is the internal fuse box on the model x not any user serviceable place if you ever need to get access to it anyway um so they're all what appears to be micro fuses and there's a fuse puller in there way down in here um i think it's labeled 216 or 9 to 219 i'm not too sure but anyways that's the one we're supposed to pull yeah i'm going to measure the voltage first though yeah so there's definitely uh 12 volts in there but you know what on second thought this is uh this is too much of a pain if i screw something up and i pull the wrong fuse it's going to be bad news so i'm not going to touch this i'm going to put the plastic uh plastic cladding back and I'm gonna focus my attention more on this side. So after poking around a little bit for finding power for the car, I've decided that uh, I'm gonna use something that I don't really recommend. I don't like them, but in the uh, interest of expediency, I'm gonna use these little blue tap cons. You've seen these before. You insert two wires, you clamp down on the uh, metal piece and it makes contact and you fold over the uh, little plastic security clip. Anyways, um, yeah, that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to tap into the electricity for the uh, the door. Well, I have some success. Looks like I have power. I don't like using those tap cons, but it seems to have done the trick here. Well, as you can see here, the installation is finished. And from the driver's position, just sitting normally in the seat, you can't even see the camera. But yet, there it is. And it's a completely... Um, OEM finish. As you can see, the wires just kind of go in there and there's no other trace and the wires go up inside the track and towards the back of the car. Would I recommend you do the installation this ways? Well, it all depends on what your intentions are. If you're going to keep the car and you want a very nice clean finish, this works quite well. But if you're leasing, uh, maybe you don't want to go this way and take all that. Uh, maybe you just want to run a parallel track down. That is by far easier to do than trying to do it this way. So um, if you're a do-it-yourselfer, uh, go the easy route. This is by far a very difficult installation. I would say on a, on a scale of one to 10, this is nine, nine and a half. This is not easy to do. All right, so I just finished the dash cam install and I wanna give you some closing thoughts on the whole process on a Model X. Of course, with other Teslas, the process will be different. Of course, even with the Model 3, as far as I know, uh, we have one forum member who had it installed professionally. 
and uh, they report that it was a completely different process. On account of it being a little bit of a newer car, but because the internals and the electricity and the, or I should say the power in the car is completely different. So having said that, um, I'm a pretty handy guy and I've tackled all kinds of things in my life, including building two different airplanes, uh, you know, 10 plus years ago. So I like to think I'm a pretty handy guy. But I will say this, there's a time and a place to get something professionally installed. And this is one of those times. This was a very difficult process to, uh, to install. Uh, mainly because of the fact that I wanted a very clean OEM look, meaning I didn't want an extra track. And as I mentioned on the video, I think that if you're leasing a vehicle and don't want a permanent installation, maybe you want to take it out if you're going to turn in the vehicle or something, that you're better off running a track separately on the side of the uh, autopilot cameras to run the wires for the black view. Trying to find power in the vehicle, I mean, there's no less than four different places you can do. The, by far the easiest would be for you to run an extension and plug into the cigarette lighter in the center console. The only problem with that, of course, is that you don't get constant power there all the time. It is switched. So if you want to run your black view in park mode, uh, it's not going to be powered. So you have to tap into other places. And as I showed in the video, you can go into the driver's side kick plate, either on the right or the left. I find that the fuse box that's on the right side of the vehicle by the accelerator pedal on a left-hand drive car, of course, a right-hand drive, it'll be different, uh, is not in a good place. It's really difficult to, uh, to reach. I took the lesser of two evils and I went on to the left side and tapped into the uh, power for the door uh, using those little Tapcon things. I, I don't like them, but it, it worked and hopefully nothing will move and then we'll be okay. Um, in my case, I, I just snipped off the wire from the black view for the cigarette lighter and there's an inline fuse. So if something goes, at least I'm protected that way and I won't touch anything else. Anyways, that's my hope. As far as the difficulty scale, uh, I would say this is about a nine and a half. Um, I don't want to do this again. I would definitely hire a professional. I know some of you in the video comments are probably going to say something like, well, didn't Elon promise us that he was going to do something kind of a dash cam on the Teslas? Yeah, he did say that, but you know, it's Elon and Elon time is a real thing. He never gave us any kind of indication as to when that was going to happen. Besides, Elon promises a lot of things and he doesn't always fall through with them. Didn't he say we were going to get a spaceship steering wheel in the Model 3 or a tow hitch or something special? Sorry, that stuff never happened. So you can't always hang your hat on what he says as far as that's concerned. Second reason is the Blackview, already owned, and I consider it uh, to be one of the best uh, dash cams you can get. And, um, you know, the third reason, of course, is OEM features are never usually as good as something that's third party. So that's the reason I put the black view in. And um, there you go. Anyway, I hope you uh, enjoyed the video. And if you like it, don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, give a big thumbs up to the video. And I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching.